back once again. Today we will discuss dipole moment in polyatomic molecules. If there is a molecule or there are more than one molecule, if you got a molecule where the number of atoms are more than two means three atoms, four atoms, so polyatomic molecule. So how we will determine the dipole moment of that kind of molecule? So in this case, you have to get the net vector, the net resultant vector, right? The net dipole moment. How? You know very well that dipole moment is a vector, is a vector. So if a molecule just like water, which is H2O, one oxygen, two hydrogen, it has vector number one, vector number two. There are two vectors. So in this case, how we will get the dipole moment if there are two dipole moments? So we should get one dipole moment. We will add the two dipole moments and when we add, we will get one single vector. This is a rule in physics. When you have more than uh, two vectors, two or three, means this is vector one, this is vector two, this is vector three, one, two, three and four, whatever, so ever. So, so we can add these three vectors just like if you add two plus one plus three is equal to six similarly you can add the three vectors if you add three quantities you can add three vectors but there is a rule to add vectors that is called head to tail rule what head to tail rule tell us that if you want to uh, add vectors so you will add the head of the first vector to the tail of the second vector right you will do this and if you have third vector, then the, the head of the second vector to the tail of the third and, and so on. Finally, finally, when you got all, suppose this is your vector number one, this is your vector number two, this is vector number three, and this is vector number four. So suppose there are four vectors. I have combined vector one with two, two with three, and then with four. Remember that vector number one, always its tail will be free. The tail will be free because it's vector number one. And the final vector, its head will be free. So in this case, when you add these four vectors, you will get one single vector. How you will get one single? Just draw a line between the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. This straight line is your resultant vector. It means this is the, pro, the, the, the sum of all the four vectors. Similarly, in this case, we can add the two vectors and we will get the resultant one. Suppose, uh, this is water. In water, you have vector number one, hydrogen. This is one vector, dipole moment from positive to negative, dipole moment from positive to negative, two dipole moments you have, right? So, so this is your first dipole moment. So you, you just take it like this. You will not change the direction, okay? You just take it and draw it here. So this is one, vector number one is here, okay? And this is your vector number two. You just take this vector number two and place it in such a way that the tail of the second vector touches the head of the first. So tail of the first with head of the, tail of the second with the head of the first. So you combine these two, vector one, Dipole moment 1, vector 2, dipole moment 2. These two vectors are now added. But the result is not shown. So how you get the result? You just do it. The tail of the first vector is combined with the head of the last vector. So the straight line is your resultant. So two vectors added up to give a single vector. So these two vectors are added up to give a single vector. And we will draw... A single line here just like it is straight so we'll use straight, straight here so this will be direction is also towards oxygen yes on top so this is your resultant so in case of water water has dipole moment instead of these three atoms okay is it possible that every molecule with with three atoms has dipole moment so the answer is no there are some molecules who contain three atoms but their dipole moment is zero example is carbon dioxide Carbon dioxide was assumed to contain a uh, structure like water, means uh, there is carbon and one oxygen is here, other oxygen is here, so the two resultant vectors will not be zero. But when we 
get the dipole moment of carbon dioxide by the help of machine equipment. One is your manual, one is your uh, machine. Machine can give you the dipole moment. So the dipole moment of carbon dioxide was zero and it was really, really amazing for the scientists to know that why it is zero. So then we came to know that if carbon dioxide has zero dipole moment, it means that carbon dioxide don't have structure like this. Carbon dioxide structure must be in such a way that the two vectors cancel each other's effect. So in which way the two vectors cancel the effect of each other? So this is only, there is only one possibility. If one vector is in that direction and the other vector is in its opposite direction, same length but opposite direction, their resultant is always zero. When you have two vectors of equal length and they are opposite, the result would be zero. So the scientists thought that the two vectors of carbon dioxide must be opposite with each other. So this was right, very really perfect. In case of carbon dioxide, one, one dipole moment is with this oxygen and other dipole moment is with this oxygen. Of course, there are double bonds, yes. So if I draw one dipole moment, it will be from carbon to oxygen, from carbon to oxygen and from carbon to oxygen. Look, it is always shown that from positive to the negative, you should go from positive to negative. So these are the two lines. One line comes like this and the other line comes like this. So when you add the two vectors who are uh, opposite uh, to each other, the result is always zero. So that is why carbon dioxide has zero dipole moment because of this reason. I got you the second thing. And now uh, there is one question for you. Uh, why BF3 has zero dipole moment? This is a question mark and I'm leaving this on you guys. If you tell me in the comment box that we really need this one's explanation why BF3 has zero dipole moment. So I'll definitely explain this to you instead of Boron, 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 negative, 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 positive. Even there is positive negative charge, but still it, its dipole moment is zero. It's very, really interesting. If a molecule does not have a charge, it's okay, it says zero dipole moment. If a molecule already contains charges and still its dipole moment is zero, then how is it possible? I will let you explain this. But you need to tell me in the comment box that yes, sure, we really, really need this guy. I'll explain you. Okay, see you in the letter. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye.